Filmic Pro is our number one pick when it comes to the best camera apps for Android and iPhone. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it step-by-step step in this complete Filmic Pro tutorial. Now I'm gonna be taking you through using an iPhone, but the process is exactly the same on Android as well. So looking at the overall interface up the top here, we can straight away see our key settings. We can see our ISO, we can see our shutter speed, our Kelvin temperature, we can see our estimated record time left, we can see the video codec that we're gonna be recording in, and we can also see our picture profile here too. Now all of these things is not just information, all of these here are tappable. So we can actually dive into each one of these settings directly from this front screen. Up in the top right hand corner here, we have our custom function button. Now currently I have this set up for the thirds grid. You can see that it's just triggered on and off when I touch that. We can actually customize up what this button does. So if I long press on it, then there are some presets here that we can choose from. Or if we press the little plus button in the top left hand corner here, then there is a full list of what you can assign this button to. So if there's some settings or features in here that you're using constantly, it's a good idea to set it here as your custom function button. Let's back out out of that. Next around from that, we've got our audio control button up here, the little microphone. You can see we've got access to our automatic gain correction. We've also got our volume levels here as well. We can slide this up and down to lower or to increase our volume. And you can see that as I am doing that, it's also making the adjustment on the right hand side as well. So we can also make our audio adjustments here too. Now we can also use these arrows down the bottom here to cycle between the different microphones. So we can switch this out to the front microphone on this phone, or we could actually even come across here to enable the stereo microphone too. Or obviously if you've got an external microphone, you'll be able to select that here as well. So I absolutely love that these are fast ways that you can access these critical settings. So on the far right hand side here, we can see we've got our audio bars, the volume level indicator here, as we've already covered. Down in the bottom right hand corner here, the white button here, this is your record button. So once you're all set up to record, that's how you start and stop your recording. We've got a zoom slider here as well. So we can zoom in and out using that. We've got our playback button down the bottom here if we want to preview or playback any of our recordings. We can access all of our video overlays and extra information about our shot. Things like focus peaking, false color, zebras, reactive mode here as well, or we can disable them. Down the bottom here, we can also see our time code, which is set to time of day currently. We can also see our battery level indicator and our storage here, just as a quick glance as well. We can also see our recording settings, 4K, 30 frames per second. And if we tap on this little box too, then we can actually trigger some of our scopes and things here quickly and easily as well. The Wi-Fi looking icon down here will enable remote control on and off. So you can remotely control and monitor your main device from a secondary device. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one off for now. The next one across here, this is where we can choose our camera lens. So you can see here, we're currently set to the rear camera, which we can switch to the front if we press this button here. Hey, let's switch it back. And we can also see we get options of the three different cameras that are on this phone. So we've got the ultra wide, we've got the wide, and we've got the zoom lens here too. And you can actually grab this slider here and slide between them if you'd like as well. Down the bottom left-hand corner, we've got our color adjustments and our white balance settings. All of these things are in here. And then back up in the top left-hand corner, we've got our focus adjustment options. So we can leave it here on reticle. We can also switch to center weight or to manual. And I'll show you how these work very soon. And the last thing on the main screen here is the settings button up in the top left. And this is where I'd recommend you start first off to get everything dialed in the way that you want it before you start recording. So let's look down our video modes first. We can come up here to video. Then we can come down here to where it says 4K. Let's tap on this. So we can choose here on this phone, 4K, 3K, all the way down to 540p. So we're gonna leave this here at 4K. We also get to choose our recording bit depth. So you can see here it's currently on eight. We can go to 10 or we can also enable Dolby Vision HDR. I'm gonna leave this one here on eight bit. Now just down below that, we can adjust the recording quality or essentially this is your bit rate setting. So the default here is set to filmic quality, which is normally where I leave it most of the time. But if I do want a higher bit rate, then I can actually bump this up to filmic extreme. But your other options here, if we go back again, filmic quality, we can actually just set the Apple standard here. So you can see that even by default, filmic is recording at a higher bit rate or a higher quality than Apple's standard settings. But we can also lower this as well. If you do want a smaller file size, then you could enable enable economy quality here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this on filmic quality. Then from here, we can choose if we wanna record in H.264 or HEVC, high efficiency video codec. 
Now for compatibility in the videos that I make, we normally just leave this here on H.264. You can see you've also got the ability down below that here to enable HDR if you want to record in high dynamic range. But let's come back up the top here. Let's go over to frame rate. And in here, so I've already chosen 4K 8-bit, but we get to choose here our frame rate. And you can see that you've got some presets up here, 24, 25, 30. Depending on the resolution and the mode that you're filming at and your device itself, then you'll be able to choose here up to 240 frames per second. Because we've chosen 4K on the previous screen, I can choose up to 4K 60 with this device. There's also a time-lapse mode in here as well if you want to record time lapses. But I'm going to leave this here back on standard and we're going to choose 30 frames per second in this case. Now you can also manually dial in a specific frame rate if there's something that you need. Uh, you can use these arrows here to get really granular on that. But I'd imagine that most people are just going to be using these presets at the top. Now if we scroll down here further, we can also set our recording frequency as well. So if you are getting flickering from lights in your scene, then you can switch it here from 50 if you're in a PAL region to 60 if you're in an NTSC region. Or there is also an auto setting here as well. Now I am in a PAL region here in Australia, so I'm going to leave this on 50. Now let's go back over here to encoding. And the other thing that I want to point out here on this screen is that you also have the ability to add different overlays here as well. So if you want to see what your video will look like with different aspect ratios or different crops applied, the black bars top and bottom, you can just see that in the background there. Then you can actually enable those previews here. If we tap back out, we can see we've now got those black bars on it. But a really cool feature in here, if we go back to the settings, let's go back to video is that we also have the option here to crop our source or our recording to that overlay size as well. Meaning that if we do want to create a square video, we can actually do that here. Or if we want to record in one of these super widescreen aspect ratios as well, then we can do all of that with this crop source featured enabled. And it's not just previewing it at that point, it's actually going to record the video at that size. So for this video, I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to come back over here to 16 by nine. So standard widescreen, we're going to tap on the screen here to go back. So now we've got our video settings locked down. And again, we can preview those on the main screen here, 4K 30, so that we can quickly see that everything is set up correctly before we hit record. Now, if we go back to the settings here, let's take a look at our audio settings. Again, we have control over which microphone we're going to use. We also get to choose here our audio recording type. So we're currently set to PCM, but we can also choose AIFF and AAC as well. I'm gonna leave this back at default. We can also adjust our audio frequency and our audio bit depth in here as well. The default here is 16. We can go up to 24 bit recording too. I'll leave this at 16. Now you can also enable in here Bluetooth microphones. So if you want to use AirPods or an actual Bluetooth microphone, you can turn that on here. If you don't want to record audio at all and just record video, then you have the option to turn that on here. Let's go back out of that. From here, let's jump into the hardware settings. And this is where we can enable things like clean HDMI output. If you want to connect your phone or your device to an external recorder or to an external screen or even a computer. And then you can also choose if you want to have audio output over that HDMI feed as well. But this is also where you can enable the different gimbal stabilizers that are supported in here, like the Osmo Mobile, like the Zion Smooth gimbals, or even Movi Cinema Robot here too. If we keep scrolling down, you can enable your phone's torch as well. So the light on the back, low, medium, or high. And you've also got anamorphic adapter support in here too, depending on what type of lens you are using. Not only do you get to preview your anamorphic video here, you can see in the background, we've already got again, these black bars or this anamorphic look applied so we can preview it. But if we go back to our settings there, scroll back down. Right now, this is set to actually record de-squeezed. So what we'll actually see is already got an anamorphic effect applied to it. But if we just want to record as a normal anamorphic file, if we're using an anamorphic lens, then we can just have a preview correctly on the app here while we're recording. But the video file that's recorded is a true anamorphic file. You've also got things in here like having the ability to flip your image, flip your video. And again, either as a preview only while you're recording or whether it's going to be baked into your recorded video. Let's tap anyone on the screen here to go back. Let's look at our device settings in here. Now the default with Filmic Pro is it's going to record all of your clips to its own library, which again, we can access back on the front here under that little play button. But there is also a setting in here back under device where we can actually save our video clips directly to our camera roll. So if you're gonna be sharing on social media and things, it might be quicker for you to save things to your camera roll for faster access to your files. So you can see you've got extra customizability in here with things like 
orientation lock, dropped frame indicator. If there's any issues with your recording, it's going to let you know. You've also got the ability here to stitch your recorded footage together. So if you're gonna do a bunch of small clips, but you want one big file at the end, then that's what that will do. But the one I like here is use the volume keys to trigger your recording. So you can just use volume up or volume down and it will start and stop your recording to save you touching the screen. If we come over now to stabilization, again, depending on the types of videos that you're gonna be creating, whether you're a static locked off shot or moving around, you've got the ability here to turn on or off image stabilization. So you've got your standard one here, which is Apple's built-in stabilization, but there's also two others. There's cinematic and cinematic plus, which will give you greater level of stabilization if you're gonna be moving around. But currently these are set up on a tripod, so I'm gonna leave this one off. Now, if we come down here to interface, this is, again is another area where we can customize up our filmic experience. So I currently have show touches on, that's what this little dot is here on screen, to make it easy for me to show you how to use this app. And we can also customize up what that looks like. I could make it bigger so that those dots are bigger. I could also change the color on them if I wanted to as well. Let's just go back to default here. If we scroll down, we can turn on or off our framing guides and choose what that looks like. So you can see mine set to the rule of thirds grid there. Let's keep coming down. We've got focus assist in here to help you with your manual focusing. So this is where it's going to digitally zoom in on your video so you can make your minor focus adjustments and then it will zoom back to your regular video once you've got that dialed in. And you can see you can also do things like hide your interface. You can hide your zoom rockers really just to tailor again the experience for yourself. But generally this is how I will leave it. So if we come back to our main screen here, let's look at locking down our focus and our exposure. So right now we are in reticle mode. Again, we can change that up in the top left hand corner, but essentially this gives us the circle and the square on screen. And we can pick these boxes and circles up and we can move them around our shot. So the square is for our focus point. So you can see if we wanna focus on this lens here, I would just put the box here and that's going to focus on that point. Likewise, if we wanna say focus on my hand here, then I can move this box to my hand and it's going to lock the focus. Now, if I wanna lock the focus, I would just tap on it and it turns red and the focus is now out of auto mode and it's manually locked at that point. Now the circle works exactly the same for the brightness. So we find the area that we want to set the exposure or the brightness for, we can tap on it at that point and we can see now in the top corner here that we are locked at ISO 33 and at 1 50th shutter speed. Now, anytime we want to unlock, we can just tap on the square or tap on the circle and we're back to automatic mode. Now, as with any good app, there's a few different ways that you can do things. So if we come back up to the button in the top left-hand corner, we can also change it to center weighted, which again is going to take a reading from the center here. Then essentially this will let us do the same thing, but everything is locked to the center of the screen. So you can see we've still got the inner box here. I can't pick it up, I can't move it around, but it's taking a focus reading from the center of the screen. If I wanna lock it at that point, then I can tap on it and it is locked. Same for the exposure too. I can't move it around, but I can lock it at that point. Now, if we come back up to the top left-hand corner here and choose manual, then this is where we can manually get really granular with our focus and exposure. So I can grab this slider here on the right and I can drag up and down and you can see I'm able to make minor adjustments here to the focus. Now I've also had a slider up here on the left. This one is our zoom. So you can see I can zoom in and out using that one. And if we want to now adjust our exposure, we'll just tap on screen so that we can hide those manual adjustment sliders and we're back to having our circle here. But we can also control this from up the top. So you can see we can just tap on ISO up the top here and we can use these presets for different ISO levels or we can grab the slider here to again, get more granular and increase or decrease our brightness. And the same here works with our shutter speed as well. So you can see we're currently locked at one over 50. We can either select different presets down the bottom here, or we can grab that slider bar to dial something specific in. Okay, so now that we've got our focus locked, we've got our exposure locked down as well. Next, we're gonna look at our white balance. So we need to come back up to the top here. Where we've got our Kelvin reading. 
and tap on that to bring up our white balance adjustments. And that's kind of quick access to those settings. So you can see that we've got our color temperature here with the top slider. We've also then got our tint if we want to add more green or pink to our shot. And there's also a bunch of presets down the bottom here that you can easily switch between, or you can even customize up your own here under A and B. Let's say this is the white balance adjustment that we want to save. We can now hold in on A and we can save our current values to that preset. So now whenever we tap on A, we've now got that white balance preset saved. But for more control over this, if we come back down to the bottom left hand corner, then we get those exact same settings, but we also get so many more. So we're currently on this first tab up the top here, but if we come down to the one below it, then this is where we can apply some different filters or different looks to our shot. So we've got here adamant, charcoal, so black and white, novus, infrared. So we can apply these essentially like Instagram filters to our shot from here as well. Now, if we go to the next tab down here, you can actually choose your picture profile. So we've got natural, dynamic, flat. There's also a log mode here as well. And you've also got settings here to customize things up the way that you want it. You can adjust your whites and I've also got your gray level here too. Likewise with your shadow and highlight adjustments down the bottom here. So it's awesome that you got so much control in here to really get everything looking the way you want in camera to save you later in your editing. Now, anytime you wanna reset this, there is a little reset button at the top here to take that back to default. And then below that, you can also adjust your saturation and your vibrance here as well if you wanna make adjustments to the colors. And again, for quick access to those picture profiles, you do have access to it along the top here. So we can just tap on natural and we can choose our dynamic flat or our log profile here too. So now that you've got everything dialed in and you're good to go, good idea is to come back here to settings down to presets and you can save your settings here as presets so that next time you're using the app, you don't need to come and configure everything up. Or also you can configure different settings for different types of shots that you're getting. So we can come up here to save, Let's call this Filmic and hit save. And we can see that we've now got that profile here to choose from. Likewise with some of these other ones that I've added here before. Like I have a 4K 30 frame per second mode. If I tap on that, that's going to be enabled. So this is where you could have a preset for slow motion, for 1080p, one for 4K, different shooting modes and different settings. So I absolutely love this new overhaul with Filmic Pro with the new interface and just being able to easily see everything and access all of your key functionality just with the tap of a button without needing to dive into the menus and everything. These fast access buttons here are super powerful. But also the app now is the next level of being intuitive. So whereas we're going through the settings there, I must have left it on video only mode here. So you can see this here. So there's no audio being recorded. I can just tap on this. I don't need to go back to the settings. And it says here, not available in video only mode. Tap here to disable video only mode. So I tap on that and we're now back with our audio being recorded. So it's much harder now for you to make mistakes and to miss things here because this new app overhaul and interface is so intuitive. I absolutely love it. And then when you're ready to record, you just need to again, come down to this big white button down the bottom here. We can press on that. Recording has started, but we still have the ability to do things like zoom in and out. We can adjust our exposure, adjust our focus. We can view all of our different scopes and histograms and things. We can bring up our overlays while we're recording here, just to make sure we've got everything dialed in, making sure that our shot is exactly how we want it while we're recording too. So we're not losing any of these features while the recording is actually happening. To stop the recording, we press the stop button down the bottom and our file is now saved to the phone. So then if we hit the little play button down the bottom here now, we can see the clips that we've just recorded in here. We can tap on them to play them. We can actually trim them down from in here too. So if we hit the pair of scissors there, we can adjust the start and the end time on a clip. We can hit the little trim button there and hit trim. And we can actually make some minor adjustments to our clips before we actually get them into our editing timeline or before we share them out. So that is a walkthrough of Filmic Pro. Now that you know how to use Filmic Pro, if you wanna level up your overall filming with your smartphone, then check out the videos linked on screen for iOS and Android, where we take you through step-by-step -step how to get the most out of your phone camera. I'll see you in there.